Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand AP Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to learn about Law of Probability number 2, which is also known as the Law of Total Probability and also sometimes referred to as the Inclusion, Exclusion or the Exclusion, Inclusion Rule. But before we jump into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to this lecture on the topic of Laws of Probability Part 2, which is a subsection of Section 2, Probability and Statistics. Law of Probability Number 2 Law of Probability Number 2 is also known as the Total Probability Law or the Inclusion-Exclusion Rule. And it simply states that for any two events A and B belonging to a sample space S, so these are our two events A and B, and this is a sample space, the probability that A or B occur alone or that both occur together is given by this equation. Probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. Okay, now there are a couple of things going on here and I will explain them to you step by step. So I'm not sure if we've looked at the Venn diagrams before. I believe that we probably discussed that uh, it briefly in uh, discrete mathematics. But anyways, so Venn diagrams are basically a visual representation uh, which is quite commonly used for probabilities. So we are saying that A and B belong to a sample space S. So sample space as we've defined before is the set of all possibilities. Okay, so this is a universal set for A and B. And A and B are subsets within this sample space. Now what I'm showing over here is basically um, uh, two events A and B okay which um, are not mutually exclusive because they have some overlap between them okay so an example of a mutually exclusive uh, two events which are mutually exclusive or three events would be A, B and C. Now all of these three events don't have any overlap right none of them have any overlap so that's why they are mutually exclusive they belong to the same sample space S, but they are mutually exclusive. So the total probability law, the inclusion exclusion rule basically covers both mutual as well as mutually exclusive events and non mutually exclusive events. Okay, so this equation is generally applied to both cases and it is applicable to both cases. Now let me point out where students find con uh, get into confusion, right? So if I say P un uh, probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B, that would be quite intuitive, right? Because we are used to the concept of A plus B is equal to um, A plus B, right? So probability of A plus B would be probability of A plus probability of B, correct? But we have to add this term as well because otherwise our probability will be incorrect. And why is that? Let's look at this diagram, okay? So this entire yellow circle is, um, is a set of events uh, which belong to A, right? And a set of possibilities which belong to A. And then the blue one is set of possibilities which belong to B. Now, if I say, okay, probability of A union B will basically include all possibilities within A uh, plus the possibilities uh, in B, then loosely speaking, what you would think is that, okay, this is what I'm implying, right? But now if you look at this closely, probability of A includes everything that is yellow within the yellow circle, including this overlapped hashed area, okay? So we have included the entire yellow circle. Now, if I do probability of B, if I look at probability of B, so that includes the entire blue circle, which again includes this portion that has already been included, okay? So that is the key. So this area gets included twice if you just leave this equation like this, okay? So that's why when you're adding B, you have to take, otherwise it's double counting, right? You have to remove it once, okay? You have to remove it once. So that's why there is this minus P uh, probability of A intersection B. And I'll explain that with the help of an example as well. But just visually looking at it, 
I want you to appreciate the fact that when you a simply do P A, okay, you're adding this entire yellow circle, okay, which includes this hashed area once, which is fine, okay, it has to be included. And then when you do P B, probability of B, now you've included the entire blue circle, but now this count becomes two, right? Now you have counted this overlapped area twice. So that's why we do this intersection. Now let's take a look at an example, just visually, not with any numbers right now, that I have A and B, and these are mutually exclusive sets, okay? Now, now in this case, a probability of A union B would include the entire A and the entire B, okay? But uh, we, we can leave it that, at that, why? Because A intersection B happens to be zero, right? So the equation PA plus PB is equal to PA union B is true, but it is only true for a specific case when you don't have, when you have mutually exclusive events, right? So because there's no overlap, so that's why um, it works. But if there's any overlap, then A intersection B comes into play, right? So the reason why this equation is applicable to both cases is because whether there is overlap or not, so if there's no overlap, this term will automatically become zero. So you don't even need to worry about it. But if there is overlap, then you will see in the next example, then the probability that you calculate by just adding A and B would be incorrect. So again, if A and B are mutually exclusive events, then probability of A union B is simply probability of A plus probability of B. Although this doesn't appear over here, it seems like it doesn't appear over here, but it is equal to zero. So whether you calculate it or not, it doesn't really make any difference. But this is a specific case of this equation. So always use this equation, always assume that there's intersection. And then when you find that there's no intersection, you can make this term equal to zero. Let's take a look at an example which involves a sample space and a couple of events. So we have a sample space S which includes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay, and then you have X which is a subset of the sample space. It includes A, B, C, D. And we have an event Y which includes A, B, C, D, E, F. Now you're supposed to calculate the probability of event X or Y occurring, right? So as soon as you see R, then it basically means that you are being asked to calculate x union y, which is equal to probability of x plus probability of y minus probability of x intersection y. So as I just mentioned, probability of x union y is equal to probability of x plus probability of y minus probability of x intersection y. So what would the sample space of this p x union y look like? So this will include everything that is in x plus everything that is in y, okay? So I have, I should have a in it, I should have b in it, I should have c in it, I should have d in it. So that covers everything that's in x. Now when you look at a, okay, so a is already covered by x, so I don't need to include it twice, and this is the key, okay? And b has already been covered, okay? Up to d, everything is covered, right? Now the only additional, um, items that y can contribute are e and f. So when I have this set, which includes a, b, c, d, e, f, that basically represents everything that is in x or y. Okay, so keep this in mind. Now calculating probability of x is pretty simple. I have uh, four favorable outcomes in uh, x, so the number of favorable outcomes is uh, four and the total number of outcomes are eight, right? In the larger sample space. So four divided by eight is equal to 0 0.5. In the case of Y, I have six. So six divided by eight is equal to 0 0.75, okay? And the number of common items between X and Y, you can see that A, B, C, D are common between both of them. So that is four, one, two, three, four. So four divided by eight is equal to 0 0.5. Now you can see, that probability of x union y would be x, probability of x plus probability of y minus probability of x intersection y. So we have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.75 minus 0 0.5. So that results in 0 0.75. Now let's compare this result with just 
px plus py. If I were to do px plus py, this would be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.75, right? And this would result in 1.25. So this is quite different. It's quite different from 0 0.75 because I have not calculated it correctly, right? There is double counting going on. And that double counting is that when I add the probability of x, I've added all of these items, okay? When I add probability of y, I have added all of these items which have already been included by x plus this, right? So I'm counting a, b, c, d twice, right? So that's why it is very important to calculate these probabilities individually and then substitute them in the formula, okay? It's a pretty mechanical approach, right? I mean, uh, but it will always uh, result in the correct answer because you are assuming that there is intersection. And in this case, it's very easy to verify, right? There is intersection. A, B, C, D are, um, if I were to do probability of X and Y, so we are doing R over here, right? I haven't mentioned this yet, but if you were to calculate probability of X and Y, that basically means probability of X intersection y okay so intersection which we have calculated already so this would be 0 0.5 okay we've already calculated that so or you use this equation and you use basically just the intersection so now hopefully you would be able to appreciate why it is important to take into account the individual probabilities okay add them up that's fine but also remove the intersection which is the common item our example number two involves Venn diagram and it is good for visual understanding, okay, for visualization purposes. So we have to calculate total probability of events A and B using Venn diagram. So this is our sample space and we know probability of A is equal to 0 0.3, probability of B is equal to 0 0.5 and the intersection, this probability, which is the hashed area is 0 0.1. Probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So 0 0.3 plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1, it should result in 0 0.7. Again, it's the same concept. Previously, we looked at individual sets and we were able to verify, okay, there's some, re there's some repetition. But in this case, um, most of the details, pretty much all the details are provided to you. You just have to use this formula. Again, the key message I want to deliver with respect to law of probability number two is please don't ignore this term, okay? Even if you have mutually exclusive sets, okay? Even if you have something like this, this will end up being zero, right? So always include it. Don't um, assume that A union B is equal to A plus B. It is true only for the mutually exclusive case, but it is not true in general. So force yourself to calculate this, okay? And if it ends up being zero, that's fine. You can simply add up probabilities of A and B. Otherwise, you will be double counting and chances are that one of that wrong options might actually appear, right? As one of the options in the question. So you might walk away feeling that you got that correct uh, answer correctly, but, uh, but you won't. So please understand this formula and apply it properly. In this lecture, we learned about law of probability number two, which is also known as the total probability or the inclusion exclusion principle. A lot of students get confused about this term, which is provided in the mathematical equation of law of probability number two. And that's why we spent a lot of time reviewing it through examples as well as the Venn diagrams. And I hope it is much clearer for you now. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES F Electrical and Computer Exam Specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full-length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well-reviewed course comes with an amazing 30-day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video.